Welcome to Tech for Today. With the new iPad Pro released recently, I've been wondering how well a normal iPad could handle more demanding tasks. In this video, we will see how well an iPad, in my case an iPad 3, can handle shooting and editing a video using iMovie, the same app that you'll be using on the iPad Pro to edit video. So let's get into it. When it comes to shooting video on the iPad, the first thing they will need is lots of light to avoid grainy footage. You can shoot near a window for natural light, or you can just use the room lights and or a desk lamp that you have lying around. In my setup, I use a combination of the room light, a desk lamp, and an LED light bar. Once you have ample light, clear a space that you can shoot, and find something to hold up your iPad in landscape mode to keep your video perfectly still with no sudden movements. After all of this is set up, you are ready to shoot. The iPad should capture very nice, crispy video as long as you have followed the steps shown before. Now moving on to the second part of making a video, the editing. Load up iMovie on your iPad and import the video files you just took. Once you start editing, you will notice that Apple tried to dumb down the experience to make it easier to use, but in turn removed the ability for cool editing tools. Basic features such as transitions, text on top of video, and voice over appear, but aren't as customizable as I would like. Overall, editing in the iMovie isn't a horrible experience, but you may find things missing as you edit. Now moving on to positives, using your fingers to edit and drag things around on the screen works much better than I thought it would, and I didn't come across any kind of issues when I was doing this. Also, being able to carry around such a slim and sleek device allows you to be editing your videos whether you're out and about, or just want to lay in bed. I can see iMovie on the iPad being used in circumstances where you need one compact device to do all of your work on, but when you have other devices handy, I recommend avoiding it. And now for the final step, let's check out what I came up with. Today we're going to be looking at the GameCube controller adapter made by Mayflash, so let's get into it. First thing first, the price right now on Amazon is $14.29, so that's pretty reasonable. Now when we move on to the build quality of this device, it is pretty good. It has four ports for the controllers, and then the switch on the back for PC and Wii U mode. Other than that, you have two USB ports at the ends to plug into either the PC or the Wii U. To get the Mayflash adapter working on the Wii U, all you have to do is open this port and then plug the two USB cables in, and then make sure that on the adapter itself that it is set to Wii U mode. And as you can see from the gameplay right here, you can see that it's working perfectly fine and all the controls are working excellent. Now the same thing that you did for the Wii U, plug the USB ports into the PC and then make sure on the uh, adapter itself that you switch it to the PC mode. And as you can see from Dolphin Emulator here, all of the buttons are working perfectly fine, and the controller is in a working state. And as always, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel as it really will help me out. Thanks for watching, guys. As you can see from that video, editing on the iPad can look pretty decent in a pinch, or if it's the only device you have to use, but looking at different solutions on a PC may be the way to go. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel as it really will help me out. Thanks for watching, guys.